first uh on a scale of zero to five how difficult do you think this lab is one two three five is very difficult so three three four this means super easy no okay so um again with learning how to write code and write tests at the same time so please just don't give up just uh ask if you're stuck okay milestone one what do we did we learn when you run our spec spec there's so many tests so scroll scroll if many of them fails don't worry one at a time right pick one file and you can run it and you can learn that right milestone two suddenly whoa this different syntax so this capybara uh syntax it's quite similar to um what people use in Cucumber. Uh, there's a bit of interesting use case here. They sign up uh, here. You can add additional uh, so dependency. But all you have to understand is that similar to this describe block, feature here is the same as describe. It just reads like English. There's a before block. So before here is run before each test. Okay. So I explain here there's a before block. It's the same as before colon each. That's an argument. Sometimes you may see before all. I never use it uh, in you know ten years ago. I use it. I realized that most people think it's a bad idea. Where you run it once and then you run some test. That's not good. What happens if the test is run in different orders? We want in this case before it, it runs and then run a test and then wipe empty again and then it runs this before and then run this test and then wipe. That's better, right? Each test should be independent. Now you see. To do this, this milestone too, you can do very quickly if you read somewhere else in the file, right? Before means sign in the user, and then you can say, oh, this guy test that by checking the flash message, right? And then you can go to Rails server, localhost, and check it, works. And then that's how exactly you implement the second test, right? <coughs> this one's clear? Everyone's clear now? Okay. Sesh, uh, um, some of you may think it's actually a little bit mag magic uh, sign in users email password well um, it's actually with if you use device there should be a sign in helper uh, in device but you can also add for this code base you can add um, sign in using view helper so sign in you can also fake the session in this case you can implement your own sign in. How do how do we sign in? Go to root page, click the sign up, and you know sign in button. That's exactly what we do here. We define a sign in method, pass in username, password. You see, fill in email, fill in password, click sign in. Beautiful, right? So it does that in the integration test, right? So you can implement this, and then you reuse it in the uh, what? In your feature test. So I usually people put all the extra stuff in spec slash support. Don't worry so much, right? You don't have to worry about refactoring your code very much. But in the big code base, you join, you tend to see people extract out. Oh, I use sign in everywhere. I extract it out here. This one makes sense, right? You see there's a support folder here, okay? So let me see. There must be a way that people add it. Um, I think it's sort of loaded. Uh, anyway, that's where's that sign up? Oh yeah, feature. It's it's loaded. These these files are loaded with your spec. I was checking if you know if it loads. Oh here, you see the first line here. Uh, not first line. This line twenty three here. It loads all the files. So that's why you help the you have the helper, and it defines that helper. Don't worry if you don't remember this. Just know that you know there are ways to share the same kind of code across different tests. Okay, milestone three. It's very easy. I actually create a sample um, uh, repo here. So all you have to do is click to view the change in code. Uh, there's some dependency, but the guard file, the reason it works is bundle exact guard, right? Understand you define this one type of guard. What is that guard? 
if you have any files that you see watch if any of your rails uh, uh, spec helper files spec, spec support it watch anything under the aspect folder it watch any Ruby files in your lib folder it watch any files in your rails folders views and then when that happens it will run the, the test so if you change your model user at RB it will run the user underscore RB so there's this clever thing right it watch and then it runs the corresponding file why is it good it only run one file at a time right unless you press enter you press enter it will run all the tests so this saves you a lot of time okay so this one nothing interesting um, but you use it for most projects yes. uh, when you run where's in here you see if I run guard right right up here right it only run with uh, you know if you say uh, uh, here uh, if you save this file it only run the product file but if you press enter over there it will run everything all right now commit um, there is a trick rails actually provide a um, bin folder this is called bin stuff it comes with rails so sometimes you do bund uh, if you type rail server it doesn't work try bundle exact rail server depending on your gem, ruby gem setup and if that doesn't work you try bin slash rails it is uh, smarter maybe it's shorter okay now you can do the same thing with uh, guard and r spec just do bundle bin stuff guard bundle bin stuff r spec and you can add them here okay some gem have executable right then you can run like that all right milestone 4 this milestone 4 is uh, already you know some of us have difficulties what is in milestone 4 right so I'll just show you the code uh, okay so how do we get to this this thing where we start out with um, their feature test right is it milestone 4 all right so what what does it ask create alphabetical okay so I actually did before this I guess so this one's actually all of you know how to do uh, alphabetical let me just do that how do I do it now um, Hold on. Okay, let's show you the alphabetical one. All of you know this. You describe a method and then you test. So the the equality test equal empty array and empty array makes sense. When you load a product with and compare to something else, you compare two product instance, right? When you compare these guys, they compare by ID. Right, so it's the same thing as mapping all the guys here. You know the ID in this array, and then it's the ID here. Obviously, this is very clean. When you have two guys, I create B first and A second. If you do dot all, then it will return B and A. But because I do dot alphabetical, it returns A and B. Make sense? And then I do the same thing. So um, this one already you you know it quite well. But then it asks you. To do the feature um, test right so this one a lot of you find uh, trouble with create a new feature test how do we do that guys rails generate what rails are uh, our spec feature and then you can say sort products again rails is very smart so you can just put that into underscore and stuff and so if I go to that file after I generate is in what spec feature uh, let's say sort product spec so this is what I do um, I have a feature and a scenario scenario is based it's similar to this it block right it's the same right so what I what I do here I create two product and then I visit the page and I check that page now normally remember in you normally have this right you can say have to have text you know something to include text or have text and all of that right but what I'm testing is a little bit more difficult because I'm testing the um, what is it I, I test a name in different places right 
So that's why we need to do something cooler, which is Do I get my rails running? Wow. Okay, I can turn off my... Sorry. Do I have rails running or not? Let me quit my other process here. Sometimes rails is st stuck like that. Oh. Okay, Whew. All right, a lot of things going. Good time still running. So, what you have is page, page dot you know body or dot content, right? It's it's the entire thing. It's, it's too much. So you can also say, hey, in, should include this text, but you can do it smarter. You can say, well, the name here, right? Name here, name here, name here. I just need to test that. So then you right click on it and then you inspect and then you will see the class name. You can use a helper like this. Ah, this guy use um, H4 product name. So then you can use the CX CSS method like this. So it's just documentation, right? How, you know, you Google how do I test uh, by parsing the CSS or the element so and it's because you go are going to use this page dot you know all CSS thing um, again so that's why we encourage you to separate it to a method up there very clear make the English very clear right so this one now it's is clearer and you see I produce uh, at data I test the current state I Test now. I test clicking on this link, and then the status after this. Uh, the first test, line seventeen, it's to check that we actually click on the link, right? The link actually go to this page. So you actually get you know local host three thousand question mark sort equal alphabetical. The second one will test that the page has now changed. Uh, it has a different content. So most of you get here. Now the next one is is difficult. And I'll just click here to run that. And then how do I get this guy to show up? All right, you guys read this. And if you actually try it, you realize that, oh, things get more and more difficult when you go down here because you make change here and then things may break up here. So how, how do we do this? Um, first, think about how we do it. Product discount, the right model test. What's the first thing you do? You go to model spec, right? Where's my model spec? Product spec. And I write that. You see my test? I even copy these three lines over here and they become my it statement. And then at first I don't do anything. They're empty. Right? So I can use this one way. I will show you a better way. But before do, always have a product. Okay, of course. If it's me, normally I just do it down here, you know, product.new, blah, blah, blah. Just show you different ways to do it. Okay, discount amount, so it's clear. Hats that cost, blah, 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 so I set product.price is this. You see this underscore? Ruby, just make it easy for you to write so you can put underscore anywhere in your number. Yeah? So it's like, you know, writing Vietnamese, right? Uh, about your, your number. So if you write one billion, you can write... Instead of one and then type, you can write zero 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 underscore zero 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 underscore zero zero zero. Okay, so this is how I write a hundred and now hats that cost more than this. Whoever read this code is gonna find that it's very easy to read. Ah, you adjust the price to a hundred thousand or one. Uh, you expect the discount amount to be zero point twenty one. That is twenty one percent. But you're comparing two float number. You cannot do equal. Okay. So then there's a B within. I just do something smaller than, you know, it's like one tenth of it. So it's like, it cannot be 0 0.22. It has to be 0 0.211. And you compare these two things together. So are you clear about this test? Raise your hand if you're clear. Can we move on? Then you can do the same thing, copy and paste. But make sure that, okay, 200,031. 
800,041. Clear? But when you write this, just do one and then you're going to make the test pass, right? And write another one, make it pass. Imagine if you did not do this. How do you implement this method? If else statement? Yeah? yeah? yeah. Sure, right? Let's see how I implement it. That's it. I write one statement. Return 0 0.01 if this is greater than this, and I put zero. It passes, right? Mm -hmm. And then I write the second test. I'm like, hmm, no need for if l. I just do return this if this pass. I update my code. And then I run the third pass. And then so by doing test driven development, I write this in the way that normally I cannot think it's going to turn out this way. But then the, it looks very clean, right? And it cannot be wrong, though it's much harder to be wrong because otherwise you're if else. But if you do one test at a time, your code, you don't have to do trial and error. Make sense? There's no less than equal, less than these other things, right? Or case statement. So that's a benefit. Great. Next. Sales price should be rounded to this. Wow, this one is actually difficult. Why? It's asking you to test something called final price. Right? But how do you get the final price? You have to go through this. And when you go through this, you get the, this number. And then you have to make sure it should round to this number, right? Sorry, I'm using up everyone's time a bit. It's important. Yeah? So this is how I test it. I'm like, wait a minute. I, not, I only have discount amount. I haven't tested final price without rounding. Let's do that first. OK? So that's why I implement final price raw. It's much easier to test. So I implement final price raw price times one minus discount multiply. This one is clear or not? Clear. So then I write test for it. Uh, but of course, before I write this raw, I decide to test the raw method first. So final price raw looks like this. And again, it looks very clean. This time I show you a different way to run before block. It's a let statement. Before block, define a variable. So you use instance variable. Remember? But it's always run. Even if you don't touch that instance variable in a test. Make sense? Let is lazy. Let is lazy. So you see let product is like a method product. But if you don't use this word product, it doesn't run. So it's like calling a method, right? So that's cool. Maybe there's no need to waste. Right? So, but in this case, it's also easy to read. Let product, and then I do the same thing. Now, in this case, I'm testing a very general thing. You just need one test case. Up to you. But I do one test case. What is it? I say, man, final price raw better be total and minus discount. How do I test? I know exactly if a price is this, it should be the same. The price is this guy. I will do the calculation here as well. So whoever read this, understand my code without having to check, right? Ah, oh yeah, so you're just testing that this guy multiply by this. So if you make a mistake somehow refactoring, moving some method, in, you know, this will help you catch your mistakes. Is that clear? Mm -hmm. So you read this, it's like, oh, this test looks good. This guy make my life easy to understand. So now I move on and test this block. Okay, here's something new that I haven't taught you. Look at how I test final price, right? Same thing, I can do let product. And I, again, I copy these two things into two it block. Look at what I'm doing here. I only need to test if final price raw is this number, 115,000, the, the final number is 120. But if you normally you test it, you're like, I, what is the original price? D and D field, what is the discount, right? I'm like, forget it. I already test final price, raw. So I say fake it. This product, pretend if I call product.finalPriceRaw, always return this number. You separate the logic. So I'm going to test product.finalPrice, but I, the only thing I need to know is what is the final price raw before my rounding. So then you read this test now. This is called stubbing, stubbing method. This 
allows you to do unit testing without, you know, method A depends on method B, depends on method C. Well, when you test method A, just say method B should be this. I don't need to test you because there's someone else. Right? So I did that. Allow product to receive this one. If you don't do anything, it always it allows you to call it, but it returns nil. If you put a block to it, then it will return that number. So if you read this one, you don't need to understand us, but you it reads English, right? So expect this to be this. So my test looks like a good test. How do I implement it? So I implement the second thing here. So with that, I can confidently implement. I go like, oh, what is this round method? Right? Rounding and a float to an in integer, right? And then if you read the docs, something surprises you. If you say round minus four, it will count zero, one, two, three, four to the left. And round to 10,000. Most of us don't know this. Right? Normally, you know, um, if you don't know this, then you probably, it's quite difficult, right? Divided by a 10,000 round and then multiply by, by 10,000. All of us will write that until you read that doc. Say, ah, I can do minus, right? If you take round two, then it means it can round to percentage, right? 0 .0, uh, 0 0.01. So that's cool. I got this final price. So it's tested. What's the next thing? Has on sale that you have to read like, okay, I need to test this product discount info. What is the new thing here? Uh, testing a helper. So you do Rails G R spec colon helper, right? So when you do that, you get this file. Uh, let's down here. Rails G aspect helper products. That's it. Rails will understand. Okay. So what is what is that? It will um, product here the same thing. Helper. There are a few types of helper. Uh, so what we're testing is that the return value of a helper. Right. So read the docs anyway. In some cases, you test that. Hey helper. I need to test that you are using my variable. So let's say a display product helper uh, test that a it should use the variable at product. That's one way to test. You don't need to test too much. Here I'm testing the output, the string. So how do I test it? Describe same thing. It returns more than blah. So I say, oh, here's the product, and except it's a bit weird, right? Because a helper is a module. So it gives you something, you can call the, the class method on it. It just always is, so expect helper dot product blah 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 equals this. This one makes sense? But how do I implement it? So I go to the helper. Where is uh, my helper? Up here. And then, you know, I implement. But I'm like, oh, I need to do this guy first. So then, of course, you can test on sale if you want, but okay. There's no time. If, the, if this is on sale and I write, you know, I write out the what the, I expected. And again, you can, this is up to you, but you see it's not super simple. You have to test always like that. So you just tweak around, uh, around multiply it by 100, and then convert to an num integer number. Because I had a test, I can write it with confidence. It doesn't read very clear, right? But thanks to test, you can write it, but it's still true. So what is it? You take this discount, 0 0.21, you round it by one, it means you remove the last, 21%, remember? Becomes 20, 0 0.20, then multiply, then you become 20, but it's still 23.0. So you have to convert it to integer. But there's so many ways to do this, but the test is the same. So that's why we make it difficult by asking more than 20% off, more than 30% off, more than 41. We don't ask you to write, you know, just put percentage there, right? I even tried the number to set percentage helper. It didn't help me. It keep giving me problems, all these digits. So that's it. That's for milestone uh, five. No, so, sorry, I keep you for too long. The sale thing, like, you know, keep all the methods simple. On sale, just discount greater than zero. Right? So this lab, uh, very confusing, but, you know, it's a lot to learn. I hope that recap helps. If it's a bit fast, you guys can see all that, uh, you know, can commit. Okay, questions? Huh? Go, go ahead. 
Okay, uh, on milestone four at the very end, there's a difference between a feature test and an integration test. I don't really understand. We feature test is an integration test. This is an integration test. We call it integration when you know here. When you start, you know, using like uh, visiting the view, and then it goes to more than one page. It's always this integration. But the problem with this kind of test is it's very slow. When you have like a hundred or a thousand in your code, then you will cry. Okay. That's why stopping is cool, right? Because then you you don't have you know to test the same things too many times. Unit tests uh, are faster. People prefer that. But this uh, some some important logic. <laughs> You do writing this uh, is nice. So you, you know, for example, signing in, signing up. How you want to sign people in is up to you. As long as the result, I visit the page, I get there and get out. That's good enough. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that's a bit more uh, uh, more complicated to explain. We already.